So it's 2.30 this afternoon and my brother calls me on Facebook Messenger. So like back in the States, it was 1.30 a.m. for him and I was really confused why he was calling me because he was working the next day. It was a, it's a work day, it's a work week. And he called just to tell me that they just got done packing up orders for the previous days, orders that came in for the company. And the way we do it is, order comes in, we don't ship it out any later than 24 hours. Like if you order that morning, it goes out that afternoon. If you order that evening, it goes out that next morning. We get it out as fast as possible. But sometimes I get so caught up in what I'm doing with the business and work here at the Army and filming videos and getting workouts in and the diet and everything that I, I forget that they're on the other side of the world helping me make my dream, my passion of running this business my primary source of income after the Army come true and they're really putting the work in to help me sustain this business. So first off, I want to thank you guys for all the support of supporting the company and the channel and everything. But second off, I really need to thank my brother and my dad for taking care of the logistics side of the house while I'm here in Korea and they're back in the States. All right guys, so my approach to transitioning out of this cut back into like a maintenance period. I'm not necessarily going into a bulk right away. A lot of people have been asking me that. Uh, I'm not going straight into like a very aggressive bulk, but this is my approach to moving out of a cut. This is the way I did it when I did my last bodybuilding show. This is the way I'm gonna do it now. This is the way I recommend to people. Uh, my like theory and practice is pretty specific because I haven't brought this up in a video in a long time, but when I was like 14, 15 years old, I had an eating disorder. I was anorexic and I struggled with it for around a year and then after that while I was like recovering I just had very like unhealthy relationships with food and I know a lot of people are prone to that that are in the fitness industry and that go into these dieting in competition mode phases it's just it's pretty normal in this industry and a lot of people struggle with it so the way that I approach moving out of a cut is I don't do like a aggressive very restrictive reverse I don't take it very slow. I'll just give you an example of the way I do it. So when I was at the peak of my bulk, I was like 3,900 calories. And then I initially, week one of the cut, went into a 500 calorie deficit. So I was like 3,400. And over the course of 11 weeks, I moved all the way down to 27, 2,800 calories. That's the lowest I got. So this week is week one of transitioning out of the cut. I moved calories back to week one of cutting calories and macros. So right now they're at about 3,300, 3,400 again. I moved carbs up to 400, so I pushed them up 100 grams, and I moved fat to 80 grams, so I moved fat up about 15 grams. Reason I do this is to get out of a deficit. So like 11 weeks of dieting is not a long time, but there's people that are doing like multiple competitions during a, a competitive season of like bodybuilding or physique or figure and it's not only physically draining and exhausting, but mentally as well. So doing like a very restrictive reverse out of a cut can sometimes have negative effects, more negative than positive. So I always recommend get out of that deficit as fast as possible. You're gonna put some body fat on, yeah, but you're gonna feel a lot better. So even though my carbs weren't super low, bringing them back up to 400, just 100 grams of carbs, 15 grams of fat, my energy levels are really good. I feel like back to normal. You bring some normalcy back in your life right away. So that's my approach, is I, I don't do a very restrictive transition out. I have like a conservative amount or a moderate amount of calories that I bring back into my diet. Normal things, or level things out a little bit again. And then after that, I, I watch a scale, I watch the mirror, I watch my like progress in the gym, and then I make changes slowly based off of like how I'm feeling, how I'm looking, to primarily manipulate carbs and fats from there. Protein stays the same while I'm cutting, while I'm bulking. It's been like 250 grams this whole time. Um, but I'll kind of manipulate my carbs primarily as I'm moving into more of a growing, bulking season. Fat a little bit. Uh, but you just kind of got to experiment a little bit. Find what works for you, what doesn't work for you, what makes you feel better, what improves your training, and take it from there. What kind of food is that? Barbecue? Uh, did, uh, this restaurant is a bipe. What is it? Bipe. 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 What is that? Ah, uh, large kinds you want to uh, 
choice in the Oh, like buffet. Buffet. Oh, okay, buffet. buffet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, awesome. I'll check those out. All right, so breakfast is baked zucchini bread oatmeal. I thought of this like the other night, uh, but I had to buy a actual vegetable grater to make it. I've been seeing a lot of people using zucchini in oatmeal recipes lately to add a lot of volume, and it does. So last night I prepared the zucchini. I just grated 175 grams, and then this morning I mixed up one cup of old-fashioned oats, two servings of coconut flour, about a tablespoon of cinnamon, about a teaspoon, five grams of baking powder, one whole egg, uh, three servings of the Splenda brown sugar blend, about three or four packets of stevia, and then a quarter cup of almond milk, and then I just threw it in the oven at 350 for about 25 minutes. And then I'll probably top this with like a sliced banana and some sugar-free maple syrup. Today for PT was supposed to be a four mile release run, but I woke up this morning like lower body absolutely wrecked and like taxed because yesterday was leg day and I started off the morning with squats and I got called into work early. So I had to go back to the gym later in the evening to finish up everything that I didn't get to. I ended up doing just high volume, uh, more exercise than I typically would do. People are still stretching out, if you guys can hear that right now. So I got to PT this morning and I approached the platoon in formation. I was like, all right, if you guys can give me a better plan than a four mile release run, we will execute. And for the past year of being a PL, they've been trying to convince me to do true tag where everyone stands at one end and there's two guys that are in the middle and they're it. And then you try to run past them and if you get tagged, you're it as well. And the last two guys that are extending are the next iteration of the taggers. So I was like, all right, we'll do it. And uh, it was an absolute smoker. Like, it was, it broke me off. It was like a hit training session, uh, but just something like to, to break the monotonous workouts that we do on a regular basis. And it boosted morale pretty well. All right, guys, so I want to touch on a few things in regards to supplements, nutrition, and training, and how kind of mine have changed now that I'm transitioning out of this cut. Uh, the first thing I really want to touch on is the ingredient citrulline malate. I've always been a fan. I've always loved its endurance and uh, strength and pump aspects of the ingredient. That's why I have it in intra flight, and that's why I have it as one of the main ingredients in this new pump product I'm working on, which should be released here in a few short months, hopefully before I get back from Korea. Still trying to solidify the flavor um, but in the past citrulline malate has had limited research uh, significant research showing its effectiveness in training uh, but I've always just personally loved it I've, I've found it very useful and effective but as of recently Eric Helms brought these these studies to light that citrulline malate has been shown to have significant positive effects on maximal strength and I, I completely agree with the studies that I've seen. The studies are all double blind, placebo controlled trials, and they've showed an increase in volume that you're able to perform in exercises like chin ups, pull ups, push ups, leg press, and hack squats. And uh, there were multiple studies showing this effectiveness. And like Interflight has received such astonishing reviews from, from people that have used it all over the world. And I contribute a lot of that effectiveness to the citrulline malate as well as like the taurine, the agnitine, and the carnitine all tartrate. But the way my training is kind of changing now that I'm I'm not cutting anymore, I want to increase the volume and frequency of my lift. And that's why I kind of transitioned into a push-pull legs routine. As well as I'm gonna be in the field, you know, for the next couple weeks. But there is hope for training in July. So we're going to gunnery in July. The big difference between training here in Korea as opposed to back at Fort Hood is back at Fort Hood, there are ranges everywhere. So if you wanted to go shoot your Bradley or your weapon systems, you choose a range and then you sleep out there. 
Well, here at Camp Casey, there's really only one fur the entire post, and it's been here for years and decades, so it's pretty established and built up. And because of that, I heard by word of mouth that there's a gym there. It's like a few dumbbells, a few plates, a few machines, um, but apparently I may be able to maintain some sort of muscle mass ball on the field during gunnery during those 30 days. But when then when I get back from gunnery, I'm gonna build my training program that I'm gonna focus on for the next couple months. And it's gonna have an emphasis on strength training. That's kind of why I'm bringing back deadlifts into my, my programming and routine as you saw in the beginning of this workout, but also very high volume and then deloads built in as well. All right, so a quick snack before heading into work. These have been my go-to lately. So just two whole wheat tortillas. And then what I do is I mix up three servings of PB2, which is 36 grams. I actually found PB2 here at the commissary. I spread that on the tortilla and then cinnamon. I use literally cinnamon on, on everything that you guys have seen before and I've gotten comments on Twitter. Um, since being in Korea in like the last four months, I've gone through already two of those decent size containers of cinnamon. I'm on my third right now. But it's really good if you can grill it. So just like throw it in a uh, heated pan a little bit with some Pam and then seal the edges. Turns out really well. So I use this website called LoopNet. Dot com. I end up there like every so often just starting to look for locations for the gym in the Austin area. Uh, so the way it works is like it's broken down by you can say how much square foot you're looking for, if you're looking to lease or buy, if you want like retail or industry, um, office space or like flex, flex space. Primarily what I'm looking for right now is a mixture between warehouse, industrial type of uh, buildings mixed with like flex space. So flex space would be like um, offices and things of that nature to run both bare performance nutrition and bare gym out of. But I know it's like a, it's a ways off right now and it's hard to kind of visualize where it's at in Austin and what's around the area. But I like feeding the fire of like this goal and stream that I have of opening the gym in less than a year. And it gives me an idea of the kind of like spaces that are available before we get there. So Preston moves down in September, like I said before, and he'll do like all the scouting and recon of the area to see where the um, like the the best target markets at, where our competition is located primarily, and then we'll pick a space based on that and what's what's you know available for us to use. But LoopNet is something I highly recommend to look at. Right now we're looking in the range. Now I started originally looking at 5,000 square feet um, for warehouse space, but over the past couple of months it's kind of moved its way to 10,000 square feet. So I'm looking more in the 10,000 square feet. Um, availability of space more of like a raw warehouse pretty much just walls and AC bathrooms a little bit of office space but I want something in the back that I can do some sort of back workouts as well I'm very specific what I'm looking for but at the same time I'm flexible and I can kind of reno renovate whatever I find so that's the video guys I hope you enjoyed this one I will talk to you guys in the next video